headed to Prestwick Airport this morning because here yeah, the only place in the UK that Elvis Presley has set foot on March 2nd 1960. It wasn't at this particular location, this terminal building wasn't built until 1964. So in the terminal building, although it wasn't this terminal, it is acknowledged. The star on the floor, Prestwick, is the only place in the United Kingdom visited by the King of Rock and Roll. Sergeant Presley was greeted by screaming fans on 3rd of March 1960 when his aircraft stopped to refuel. It was the evening of the 2nd of March 1960 that he actually landed here. This is just around the sides of Prestwick Airport and the road just to the left but there now it's uh, it's only about 50 yards long but it's actually called Elvis Street there's no sign there um, to denote it but uh, on the maps it is Elvis Street and the, the new terminal is up that way in the distance the old terminal was Orangefield House um, and it was literally just in that direction there I can't go up because it's uh, a Covid testing centre at the moment so it's the signs up to uh, no filming or photography is uh, to respect people's privacy so well, you can see the top of those uh, tents that have been set up there just beyond that about 30 yards would have been the Orangefield House old Prestwick terminal on the 2nd of March 1960 Elvis landed here in a DC 7 He'd left uh, Frankfurt Airport around half past five that afternoon, waving goodbye to Priscilla Bulow. And the flight landed here roughly around half past seven in the evening. The old terminal there, the old terminal building would have been uh, through the trees, the other side of this car park, about another, about another 50 yards or so. There's a, there's a new taxiway there now uh, that runs alongside the runway. But right there would have been the Orangefield House Terminal that, that would have faced, would have been facing towards the runway as the runway goes down there. It would have been facing on, uh, facing the direction of the runway, and the planes would have taxied outside there. So uh, that's where Elvis came in 1960. So uh, I've come around here, and it's not right the point where I wanted to film, but uh, I, you can't film by the COVID centre, and I'm not. Uh, seen anybody in this frame here so I'm okay be here and that's where the plane uh, taxied and Elvis got out and went into the terminal and he was interviewed there for a while after talking with reporters for a little while in the terminal building there Elvis went over to the NCO mess which was in what is now the Adamton Hotel which is over the other side so we'll head over there over there now so this is the old Moncton Road, so the Elvis, when he left the terminal building heading over to the NCO mess, the car would have come out somewhere, somewhere around here the old entrance was. And in those days this Moncton Road carried on straight through over to the village of Moncton and round to the NCO's mess. And when the runway was extended, not long after Elvis landed here actually in 1960, it wasn't long after that that the runway which had ended just be where this road goes, the runway had originally ended just before it, but the runway now extends extends beyond, so the, obviously this road has it now ends here and you have to go around the new terminal building to get to Moncton. This is now the Adamton Country House Hotel and this is where the NCO's mess was. The, the airport is just a, mile and a half or so in that direction then this is where Elvis came for a short stay and there's pictures of him in the NCO's mess. Elvis was on on uh, on the ground here about an hour and a half in total before taking off and heading across the Atlantic Ocean. After leaving here somewhere sometime in between 2 and 3 a.m. Elvis's plane landed at the Ernest Harmon Air Force Base in Stephenville, Newfoundland for another uh, fuel stop. 
and then proceeded on from there to to land at Fort Dix at the Maguire Air Force Base around 20 to 8 in the morning of March the 3rd. On March the 5th Elvis received his honourable discharge for the Army and left for Trenton, New Jersey en route to go back home to Memphis, Tennessee. The Orange Field Hotel was superseded as the terminal building by the new, the new one that's around there now, although that's uh, gone through a bit of refurbishment. It actually opened in 1964, the new terminal, and the Orange Field House, uh, unfortunately, was demolished in 1966. So this is the only time Elvis uh, set foot in the UK. There is a story of Tommy Steele, apparently uh, uh, Elvis coming over to London and going on a, a taxi tour of London hosted by Tommy Steele. Now, that's, I don't know, I think that's pretty unlikely. There's no, no record of it. Uh, Bill Kenwright, the theatre impresario, uh, told a story and said that Tommy Steele was sworn to secrecy. But um, I'm sure somebody in the Elvis circle at the time, he was in Germany with uh, Red West and Lamar Fike, Rex Mansfield, I'm sure somebody would have known and would have said about Elvis's uh, little trip into London. You know, Red West uh, in the Elvis, what happened, but the, the drug intake and everything was uh, fully exposed in the that book so I'm sure a, a secret trip to London in 1958 would have come out at some point or another so did Elvis actually come to London in 1958 or, uh, or was Tommy Steele telling a little white bull